Welcome, everybody, to the Synapse Philosophy Group. We are on Dee Dee Palmer's 1914 book, The Chiropractor. We've just finished my favorite chapter in chiropractic, The Moral and Religious Duty of a Chiropractor. And now we're on page 13. Chiropractic is science and art and the philosophy thereof, period. And uh, so we're getting more into the mind of our, our uh, father of chiropractic, D.D. D. Palmer. And uh, I just want to acknowledge everybody. We got Alan Lichter, myself, your host, Dr. Haig John, and uh, Carol Crystal. And Bob Crystal's probably back there somewhere. There he is. There he is. <laughs> and uh, we got Barry Hobbs, and we got Dr. Christian from Mexico here. And uh, we are jamming. How's everybody doing tonight? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to start reading, then I'm going to switch off. Why don't we all take the little turns here, and uh, I'll start reading this part. We're going to discuss as we do. Let's get a little discussion through here, what you're feeling, or you want clarity, or just, you know, something you want to express. But that's what this show is about, really, is we also want to talk about it. Okay, 13, page 13. It has been said that science is a stranger to no now wise accounts how do i say that no, no wise, wise account yeah for the uh, peculiar contents of the book of life medical men have never been able to harmonize the science of medicine that organize functions in health and disease science is the registered mental account of our surroundings it is common sense we desire to know things as they are Chiropractic embraces the science of life, the knowledge of how organisms act in health and disease, also the art of adjusting the neuroskeleton. An organism is an organized body, such as known as the living economy. The regulation of the parts of an organic whole, the aggregate of the parts and law governing an organism. Ecology or bio, uh, bionomics is the branch of biology, which deals with the mutual relations between organisms and their environment, the effect which our surroundings has upon life, the modifications of vital actions, actions which are directed by intelligence. Bionomics forces, bionomic forces are those external forces other than vital forces. I'm going to stop one moment. Dee Dee says vital forces is the term he likes to use the most. He doesn't like mental impulse, which influences the changes, uh, changes incident to the development of life. Bionomy is the laws of life, the science which treats, treats of laws regulating the vital functions. Biolo biologus is the living is the living intelligent power displayed in organic activity. Uh, bioenergy, bi bioenergy bio <laughs> is the life force, <laughs> the force ex exercised in living organisms. And ec an organism is an individual animal or plant. Any living being is an organism. The collective part which in, in, excuse me, encompasses an organized body, together with the laws which govern their actions, constitutes an organism. An individual so constituted that it may carry on the activities of life by means of its organs, which, although differing in function, yet are mentally dependent upon each other for Mutually. their individual acts in an organism. An organized body endowed with a separate existence whose vital actions depend upon the aggregation of organs constitutes an organism. End of paragraph. That was a paragraph. All right. Well, I put out th uh, five pallets of sod in my yard today. And as I was thinking, as I was doing that, I was thinking, I wonder how many different organisms are actually in these pallets of sod. And then I was thinking, none of them are helping me put this sod out. So heck with them. <laughs> anyway, 
What'd you guys get? How do you feel right now? How do you feel about well, what Didi when you watered? But when you watered that sod, they they you helped the organisms. We, we yes, absolutely. We've spread out their environment to a whole other neighborhood, <laughs> so the weeds can grow in my yard now instead of the farm, right? Well, you know, he's building up right now. Hey, how's it going? So he's building us up right now to get talk a little bit about more of biology and function. And uh, this is a very, very good section. And, uh, you know, we can keep reading it. Anybody else I think it's read? important, to, I think it's Go important ahead, to note that he's saying, you know, chiropractic embraces the science of life knowledge of how organisms act in health and disease that that he's not he you know we were talking in the in the first chapter all about spirit and 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 that and the integral part that that plays and the integral part that chiropractors have in affecting that and connecting that uh and here now we're talking about a physical body and how that works and that's also important for chiropractors to understand. They're not, spirit and, and body are not disconnected. They, there's a connection and we need to understand both for, to be able to do what we do. That's very he's, insightful. That's very insightful. Absolutely. He's, ahead, using, ahead. he's using some key words, which Alan is saying here, he's using some key words here that we currently use today, vital force and intelligence, right? intelligence in matter, intelligence running the organism. So yeah, yeah two, two key words uh, that stuck out to me in that big paragraph. Yeah, I'm wondering, absolutely. I'm wondering in that paragraph, if some of those words, I, he has them capitalized and that, that I've never seen. I don't know if they were actual words that were being used at that time, or if there's something that he was conceiving of where he's talking about bionomic forces and biologos and bioenergy and bionergy and whether those are you know whether those are something terms that he was using to connect to make a connection that may or may not have been extended at that time but i think i i found those interesting terms that he was defining there yeah you know what I, I fumbled through a couple of those while i was reading it but you know i think that's it's that's uh yeah very likely and, uh, you know, he's giving, he wants to be more specific in how he's explaining things. And, uh, you know, I haven't looked up those words, which I know we all like to do. But, uh, yeah, that's very insightful, too, there. You know, that's it. You know, by honor, by, by energy is the life force. The force ex ex exercised in living organisms. Now, we would say bioenergy, Right biological energy the n in there we just maybe change a little bit over time but that's where i got out what do you have by bi biologus so i was originally thinking biologist but a biome is a community of living organisms of a single major ecological region and then he's using bionomy which i don't know if that is an old english word or not that's similar to biology that's what i thought originally he was saying but it's it's obviously separate and distinct here yeah, and I think he's doing that, you know, be, to be specific. Biology is a very large encompassing term, right? It's, you know, the, the energy, the, the, the inner, you know, intermingling of organisms, all these different things. Yeah, collective parts which compose an organized body. I'm going to read the next part because he's kind of tying it in right here, okay? The science of chiropractic has led to the creation of the art of vertebral adjusting. That's a very important statement right there. I'm going to go back to that after I read these three. The philosophy of chiropractic, in parentheses, the science and the art, in parentheses, consist of the reasons for the principles which have led up to the, the and the wherefore of the vertebral adjusting. Science refers to that which is to be known, art to that which is to be done, philosophy gives the reason why the method and why in which it is to be performed. So, you know, all of it's tied in together is really what he's saying. You can't have one without the other. And we've talked about that quite a bit. And I keep hearing Barry in my head when I start using, you know, start with the philosophy, the art and the science. Dee, you know, he said science, art and philosophy. 
and uh, you know, I want to put it in my my ways. But you know, the science is very important. Um, anybody else? I, I have to tell myself every single second, including right then and there, to say science first and respect to him. This is the yes. way that he laid it down. I think it's interesting too here how he mentions uh, another key word that stood out is principles where he talks about the philosophy is the why, the reasons uh, the reasons for the principles. And sometimes we think that it's just Stevenson that started the principles. Um, and this is our father here stating this, right. the beginning of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, <clears throat> Claude Lessard was coming out to meetings that we were running um, a couple of years ago. And he kept talking about the philosophy is the science. It's not, it's not just the, the philosophy. Our philosophy is actually our science. And then he wrote a book about it. I don't know if any of you have seen it or know about it, but it's pretty cool. And um, it makes you think about that. I, I changed my uh, view of the whole thing. Our philosophy is our science. I, I kind of agree with that. Do you have the name of that book? I'd like to see that book. I'll, I'll, I'll find out for you. Yeah, send I me a message. It. Yeah, if you have it, I want to get one. Yeah. You, you know, um, one of my toggle teachers, his name was Keith Bailey, and uh, he used to drive like five or six hours just to come and teach us at Life, come from Nashville to, to drive to Life. And he remained my friend for years. He passed a few years ago. Um, you know, God bless him. And uh, he wrote a book and he sent it to me to read for him. And one of the things he said is, you know, the science, we use the science as of the time, right? Science is advancing. We don't have to prove, you know, axoplasm and the, the synapse. All that science is out there already. And, you know, Didi saying, you know, the philosophy is from the science and the art. And then the art is from the science, and, you know, we understand the neurology is better without the tension on the nerves of the subluxation. So we're going to use another bit of science, which is, you know, physics and use the spinous and the transverse as levers is what he said. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot, of, a lot to that. We don't have to get into, you know, hardcore reproving everything BJ did. Because the science, I feel, has really, you know, been expressed. And then we can, you know, enhance it with the science of the times. All right. Anyone else? Why don't we read the next part? How about Barry? You want to read this time? Absolutely. Science refers to that which is to be known. Art to that which is to be done. Wait. Philosophy... Philosophy gives the reasons why of the method and the way is in which it is to be performed. A science is composed of principles which coincide with mental and physical facts. I have systematized the principles, the principles of biology, thereby creating a science. The theory of chiropractic embraces the speculative principles upon which the art of vertebral adjusting is based. The study of chiropractic includes the consideration of the three divisions, viz. the science, art, and the philosophy of the two just mentioned. Chiropractic, to be a science, must be specific. In order to be scientific, it must contain the knowledge of the principles and facts of biology reduced to an unvarying law and embodied into a system. Where science ends, faith begins. <laughs> To know the science of chiropractic is to have a knowledge of the principles which compose it. The ability to put that knowledge into practice is chiropractic art. Let's pause a moment there. I like that last little paragraph. That whole little thing ties it in together, doesn't it? I'll, let me read that again. To the science of chiropractic is to, to know the science of chiropractic is to have a knowledge of the principles which it encompasses. The ability to put that knowledge into practice is chiropractic art. And, you know, does he break down the principles for us later? I think he does. All right, cool. Anybody have any input there? Or like to expound upon any of it? And just to reiterate, chiropractic to be a science must be specific. <laughs> 
something that we, that we all that we all say all the time chiropractic is specific you know Al Alex, Bob, you're unmuted go ahead go ahead Bob. <clears throat> all right so the name of that book is a new look at chiropractic basic science and joe strauss writes in there chiropractic is a philosophy of science and art those three components are taken for granted in present debates on policy. Wait a second. I'm sorry. The 33 principles are the basic science of chiropractic. This is what Joe Strauss is writing. The 33 principles are the basic science of chiropractic from which our objective and its practice are derived and applied. It is the fundamental work of our profession forming the basis of our philosophy, art, and science. Uh, the name of the book is um, A New Look at Chiropractic's Basic Science. You can get it on Amazon, or whatever. I'm going to check that out. Thanks. I really want to see it. I want to read it. Okay, let's keep going. Knowledge embraces all that we know from whatever source derived or obtained or by whatever process acquired. It is the aggregate of facts, truths, and principles obtained and retained by the mind or spirit through reason, objective perception, derived from the use of the external senses or of intuition, subjective immediate knowing of the inner animating intelligence. Beyond the region of knowledge is that of the science, lack of knowledge, a deficiency of knowableness, knowableness. Science is founded upon facts, while the science decreases as knowledge increases. The unknowable is diminished. The principles of chiropractic science were not developed or evolved from any other method. They were discovered as pre-existing elements and formulated into a system. The principles which compose the science of chiropractic are as old as the vertebrata. Okay. So, I, you know, think about that. The principles of chiropractic are as old as, you know, life itself. And, you know, just getting back to thinking about Stevenson, you know, we're talking about, you know, metaphysical things we can't put our hands on even and putting it into quantitative words for us to understand, just like a Bible, right? All right. I, I, I like that. You want to keep going? Absolutely. To know chiropractic as a science, we must become familiar with its principles. We must make it scientific. To know it as an art is to make it specific, make use of the knowledge which compose the science. A chiropractor is one who has a knowledge of the science and arts of chiropractic, one who is capable of performing the arts of adjusting vertebrae. He should also, I'm gonna add she, he or she, <laughs> should also comprehend the philosophy of the science and art, the reasons for so doing. Science is the know-how, the art is the doing. The philosophy consists in the reasons why a phenomenon, as explained by a knowledge of the powers and laws which govern them. The science of chiropractic embraces the principles and demonstrated facts of biology. The science of dynamics includes the principles and facts of machinery. The science of chiropractic and that of machinery have no resemblance whatsoever in their motive force. That being a fact, why try to illustrate either one by the principles belonging to the other? Just as well, try to explain the science of grammar by that of astronomy, geography by mathematics, chemistry by agriculture, or that of music by navigation. Man is not a machine. Okay, let's pause there. Anybody have any insights or want to say anything? I, I, I do. <laughs> and because I think of that paragraph over and over again when I use the a kink in the hose or you know all of the millions of analogies we use for machinery talking about the body and and he goes through it too in the chiropractor's adjuster 1910 he hits it home over and over again on that subject it makes it a little more difficult to explain chiropractic at times not using mechanical ways of thinking anybody else there's you know, there's some to be able to explain it 
to non-chiropractors, there's value in using analogy. It may not be perfect. The kink in the hose is, is an analogy. The light bulb is an analogy. You can't explain how the electricity gets into that light bulb and neither can the person you're telling it to. One's a mechanical, and it's a science, but it can't be, it's not that easily explained. Where does that electricity come from? How does it move through that wire? Why does it make, why does it turn into light when it gets to the end of that thing? And, or now with the new bulbs, how does that work even? You know, so the analogies are valuable, but it's interesting to think about the fact that science, that it's, that many chiropractors are mechanistic in their practice. If I see this symptom, I'm going to adjust that bone. Merrick's system was flawed in that aspect, Absolutely. I think. But it, it, it was valuable in its time. And we've moved past it on some levels. And some people at that time didn't need it either. But it's, uh, but many chiropractors, are, they, they get lost in the practice, the physical practice, and never attached, never glom onto or are taught to understand or try to grasp the bigger spiritual picture, the bigger disconnected picture that's unexplainable. How do you explain God? How do you explain universal? How do you explain innate? They're, they're, un, they're, they're not available for explanation, but the physical, yeah. we can only work in the physical plane. And you know what? I think he also doesn't want to dumb down chiropractic. No. This is an amazing thing. This is and, not written you know, for lay people. <laughs> well, you know, he's telling the chiropractor, don't dumb it down. This is teach these people, show them, right? I think that's really where he's going. And, you know, he didn't like, he doesn't like those analogies, but I, and I see what your point a hundred percent, Alan, absolutely. It does make it easier for people just to understand in, in a quick way too, and uh, but I really see man is not a machine. And this is the industrial revolution is just happening. You know, this is a very powerful time in the United States right now. Right. Or in the world. I mean, so, uh, you know, he does. not And, you know, what's happened really, that was the industrialization of health from industrializing birth, the whole part of life. It's what we're dealing with right now with birthing and death. Right. And uh, he's saying, don't play with that system. I don't know. I, I like it. I, I do my best to try not to use those terms, but sometimes when it, you get a little tired, it's just easy to just use it. You know, maybe sometimes some of the people is there, you sometimes to introduce people, it may be valuable to use the analogy and then expand upon it as time goes on. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Bob, go ahead. You know, uh, when we speak amongst ourselves, we may speak a certain way and we want to teach the people out there that we're serving. Um, you know, it may be a little bit different, but I do believe that what we what we acknowledge exists in life is unexplainable. I don't think that it'll ever really be able to be explained because it's it's huge. It's beyond our ability to understand it. And I think that but just laying that idea out to our patients is actually very valuable yes. that that they get the idea that, you know, one second someone's alive and the next second they're dead. There's something that's not there anymore. And that's something is super intelligent and super powerful. But we really nobody can really explain it completely. Even the most intelligent person in the world cannot explain what it what it is. But we all know that when it's there one second, gone the next. There's a huge difference right there. And um, then a couple examples, you know, if I cut, if I cut this table, uh, it, it's going to stay cut forever. But if I cut myself and I think about it a few days later, it's already got skin growing there, you know, and, and it used the sandwich I ate to use as building material to build that skin. And, and, it, and in the meantime, it also used that sandwich to build heart cells and lung cells. And so, um, you know, we do give the and animate the flesh, you know, we animate the flesh in our description. And uh, and that this intelligence, this wisdom that runs the body, it's it's using the physical body according to its means. So it's using the heart to move blood around the body. It's using the stomach and intestines to draw nutrients out of the food. And and then our 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 practice 
it uses the brain and spinal cord and nerves to control it all, to send power to it all, and to have it all operate. So it, that's, I love that, Bob. And here's what's amazing and awesome about this is that DD is really composing and putting all this together. This is even before the time of radio, which today we can't even comprehend with iPad and Zoom and all this. They looked at radio at the beginning like that was those were electromagnetic rays going across wires. And it's like the fridge, like, does it ask where the power's coming from? We're like, if us chiropractors, we have to think we're matter. There's limitations of matter. Well, we are matter. And our questions are flawed. Where does it come from? Who, who cares where it comes from? When, when we stop and go to sleep and Nate doesn't go to sleep. Do we question that? Whoa, wonder what she's doing. But we ask, where's this power? Where's this? We know there's 4D, 5D ultraviolet rays. We have the instrumentation to prove them, but we like to get in our heads and ask all these questions. And it, it goes back to this where DD is really composing all this and saying, guys, we are, a, we are not a machine. We are a vital force first. And we didn't get our consciousness. We weren't aware of our body parts until how old were we? When, when you had your first conscious thought, we're energy in this physical body. And he really organizes this. And I thought about that question all week. Where's the power? Where do we go? Where's this? And it's, it's beyond us. We're flawed. That thinking, that question alone is flawed. Let's live life and be. Well, you know, and it, going back to really the educating the people too, and that, you know, tell them there is something amazing within you. And that is an expression of life. I call it God. And uh, it's constantly making you and remaking you and healing you. That's the part of you that I work with. And, you know, I get caught in the analogies. But when I'm saying these people are ready for these things, tell them the truth, right? And I think of Reaver. I think it was Herbert Ross Reaver that said, you know, in his 90s, adjusting people. And forgive me if I had the name. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Herbert Ross Reaver. That they, someone asked him, why do you still adjust? Because every day I get to teach people about their own innate intelligence. I mean, you know, that's a mission. That's a duty. That's a religious duty. And helping people see themselves in a bigger way than their, you know, I'm just going to be sick and dying as every day goes on. I'm getting sicker and sicker. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, like Bob was saying that the eating the sandwich, people can relate to that. People relate, right. they get that. It doesn't matter what color, creed, religion you are. And when you relate, that's the power we're working with. They get that. They just need to get out of their own way. Yeah, yeah. And, and another a good thing about like the sandwich analogy, and I used to use that in my office too, was that you know, people don't think about the fact that they ate an egg for breakfast or they ate peanut butter for lunch or they ate a steak for dinner. And now it's eyeballs and skin and hair. How did that happen? Right? That's yeah. what I say. Do you know how that works? Yeah. Neither do I. But I know if I can release that interference, you're going to have a better job at doing that. <laughs> it's going to be easier for too. you. <laughs> I tell them this. I mean, if you had to think about that process, digesting your breakfast and then making it into living cells, it's all you'd be able to think about. That's your educated intelligence doesn't have to think about what innate intelligence is doing because it's running the show. That's the part of you I'm working with. Not the one that points to, it hurts here. I know it does and I have empathy for you, but I'm going with what is causing that and what your innate is telling me. I think that's a big difference of a mechanistic, right? To a vitalistic practice. When you were talking about being mechanistic, right? Yeah. And Pasquale and taught us, he was like, they can be, you can be both but you have to have a concept of the vitalism, really. When it's purely mechanistic, it's A, B, you're a technician at that point. A, B equals C, and that's it. Go ahead, Barry. Were you going to say something? No, I completely agree. That's, um, that's the difference between for the people who, um, the miracles that they hear. When you're working with that power that controls and created this, that, that, that is the intent where the miracles happen. Ahead, the other mechanistic aspect is that people, they're taught to adjust a certain way. You know, line up this way, move this, do this, do that, the other. And they get locked in on that and they never learn to, find, to feel the best line of drive that needs to go in for that person at that time. 
They don't even pay attention to the fact that when they look at it, if they look at a spine on x-ray, that the bones aren't shaped the way that aren't perfect and they may need to be adjusted differently. They need to, you need to understand that and you can, you can learn to feel the direction that it needs to go in, but you have to allow yourself to learn that. And that's, that's not a physical, that's not a mechanistic. You can't learn, you can't teach that. Yes, you can. <laughs> well, you can. I'm trying. That's what what we're doing. And well, you justice. teach them to be open to it is what you do. And it takes that. It takes meditation. It takes really grounding and clearing out the outside world and the educated mind to really get in and, and then trust what you're feeling and trust it becomes part of you. Go ahead, Bob. That's why it's hard for old chiropractors to retire because we start just feeling like we're getting good at it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a great point. Uh, but um, you know, the more we 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 paint the picture of the wonder of of what it is that's that's within each of us, the better. Because that uh, somebody, I believe it was B.J. Palmer, who used to say, oh, "Our biggest job is to sell the product to the producer." And um, I think about like if I was to look across the room and see something, and there was all this stuff in the way, and then close my eyes. I would be able to walk through that room, navigate through that room with my eyes closed and pick up that, that thing. And not just I would be able to, most people would be able to. And it's like, think about it, like, we, we're so impressed with a robot does this, or something does that, or a computer does that. I mean, this is like insanely complicated stuff that happens in order for us to do that. It's amazing. It really is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and trying to- people Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, putting that into an analogy of, of like a robot, right? Why would we dumb ourselves down? And, you know, my wife, we were looking at the sunset. I'm like, wow, it's like a painting. She goes, you know, a painting is nothing compared to the real view. I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, so often do I say, wow, this is like, this would be a great picture, but it's already live for me. Why would I dumb it down to a picture, right? Go ahead, Barry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, not at all. It's, um, I think that's, a, that's perfect, like what Bob was saying. Uh, and we know this as practitioners. A lot of times people will come in when it's too late or there's a problem. And it's, um, yeah, it's just the, the awe and the, the amazingness of it is out there. And um, there's, what, 210 or 310 mechanical movements um, that are known scientifically in the body. And you can relate to engineers when engineers come in the office, the human body has all those mechanical laws of science in it. And uh, that's one of the, the practice things I use with some of the engineers and science people that come in when they're questioning, you know, alignment and what you're doing and stuff. Hmm. Just restate the facts of, you know, natural laws, right? Back yeah. into them. On the Space Coast, I have a lot of engineers here. Uh, We're always putting things in some sort of engineering, mechanical, electrical, hydrodynamics, all those things. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Pasquale used to do that all the time. Like he'd say, wow, isn't that amazing? That 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 rainbow. And he'd go, it's nothing compared to what's inside of you. He like right. he would always acknowledge what was inside of us as like really the big and 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 justify it from a scriptural standpoint by saying we're the crowning creation. Yeah. So if everything else that was amazing, and then we go and become in the image of God, we're the crowning creation. Well, of course it's even more amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Jefferson Airplane absolutely. wrote a song about it. <laughs> you know, these these old artists knew what they were talking about. They absolutely did. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> you know, I heard what you know, the crowning creation. You know, I could hear Pasquale saying that right now. Absolutely. He always talked about too speaking in parallels, you know. And, you know, using these analogies are important just to get people to understand, like, an engineer that's really only thinks of in, 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 you know, in linear ways sometimes, to get them to think in metaphysical or spiritual, it's not always easy, but sometimes they, they get it. Sometimes they're very spiritual already. And, uh, but speaking in parallels and analogies, it does help people understand, and the entire Bible is that way, actually. Alan, were you going to say something I cut you off? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we did a lot tonight. You want to read a little bit more? Keep going or pause? Let's go a little bit. All right, why don't you read, Alan? The science of chiropractic is in no way related to the science of machinery. The phenomena are dependent upon vital force 
not that of dynamics. The structure of the body is defined under that of anatomy, not metallography, a treatise on metals. Bodily functions depend upon vital force, not dynamics. The existence of metals, whether in the form of machinery or that of ore, depends upon inanimate qualities, whereas the existence of animals depends upon functions. Vital philosophy and mechanistic philosophy are not correlated. They are radically and entirely different. The laws which govern the existence of animated beings and that of animated objects differ. The chiropractic science is being enlarged and urged on to higher development by the demands of the art of vertebral adjusting. Why not make use of the knowledge which composes the science? In chiropractic, you should discriminate between science and art. Science depends upon principles, art upon practice. The theories of chiropractic become demonstrated facts, the practice and art. Well, you know, that sums it up, really, of what he's trying to get for, you know, project forward towards for us. What'd you guys get from that? Yeah, that sentence, the, in chiropractic, you should discriminate between science and art. Science depends upon principles, art upon practice. They're, they're both integral and they're both, they, they're like this. They, they're necessary for the one, but you don't use them in, interchangeably. No, they, they have to integrate, but they maintain their independence. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Awesome. I have under, somebody underlined this in 1953. <laughs> Bodily functions depend on vital forces, not dynamics. I do like that. You know, it's not a part of the machinery. It's a part of that beautiful life of vital force, your bodily functions. You know, we try and mechanize that type of stuff with all the things we're trying to do with our digestion and all that. And uh, I, I like that. I do like that statement. Well, I think we ended it at a good that's ending a, But that's point. really what we were saying a minute ago. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. It's yep. a, it's a, that that is, is a concise way of saying what we were talking about before. <laughs> In a concise way. I mean, just read a little bit farther and Dee Dee will put it right there for you, right? <laughs> I might, I might post, that's good. That's a good post right there. Once they can start posting again. Everybody that listens to this, I'm behind in posting even on YouTube of our videos, and uh, but we have all of them. I'm just waiting for two more from my my guys in Mexico, um, putting the subtitles on the videos, and then I'm going to be able to do it all at once and get it all out there. Not all at once, but I'll have it there for us um, in Spanish and in English um, on on YouTube, and then it'll be on the the audio podcast in English. Um, for everyone. And I'll, I'll, as soon as I have a moment to breathe, I'll get that working again. And we'll get that knocked out for everyone. Because we had a lot of listeners and, and we still do. And people are going back and listening to the old ones. Now I had someone tell me today, they are going back there two years back, listening wow. to old philosophy of our of our podcast, because they're waiting for the new stuff. So we're chomping at the bit, I'll get all this out very soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've come to a good part to pause for the next week. What do you guys think? Anything to share? Go ahead, Barry. Yep. I think this sums it up. Chiropractic, to be a science, must be specific. So my ask really for myself and the audience is each time you come into another human being, try to be more specific in that interaction, whether it's listening to them, talking to them, analyzing them, loving them, just uh, chiropractic must be specific. Be specific about each interaction until the next time we talk. Yeah. And, you know, and, and silence is golden too, of just listening and being present is what we use in a term now, right? With being present with people. Well, thank you for that, sharing that. You know, one final plug uh, we're going to be in Spartanburg for a NATO adjusting in July 22nd. And uh, I had someone ask me, I was just at a, a cranial seminar with Marty Rosen. Anybody, I mean, I suggest doing any of his seminars. They're all awesome. And uh, 
Um, I'm, my next seminar, it's going to be occiput, atlas, C4, T1 through 3, T10 through 12, lumbar and sacrum. And someone asked me, why are you so specific? And I just smiled, really. I'm like, come on. <laughs> if it's not specific, it's nothing. Let's be specific about what we're doing. And uh, so, you know, we're going to be specific. And then we also, we're going to do our, we're going to have innate uh, mission to Haiti with my close friend, um, Peter Morgan. He's also a student of Pasquale's and uh, we're doing piggybacking on him. He's done such amazing work. We're going to be adjusting in the orphanages. We're going to be doing innate baby before. We're going to be teaching innate adjusting. And uh, we're going to be in the hospitals. We're going to be adjusting the people that really deserve it and need it, people that need it. So uh, that's going to be the, the end of September, um, beginning of October next year. Is that right? September, October. Yeah, next year. So uh, those things are coming up and uh, in 2024. I'm saying next year, better say a date. So if anybody has anything else, or if you don't, we're at the end, and I love and appreciate you all. Thank you, Christian, good to see you. Uh, Carol and Bob Crystal, uh, Barry Hobbs, Alan Lichter, Hey John, and we are over and out. Have a beautiful Tuesday night, and I'll see you next week. All right, guys. All right everyone. Awesome.